everybody, it's me Adele and welcome to my channel Sofa Serenity where I talk to you about my sewing journey. I talk to you about my love for dressmaking, fabrics, patterns and we have general sewing and life chit chat. So if that sounds of interest to you, please keep on watching. Welcome back to my regular viewers and if you're new here, I hope you enjoy this vlog and consider subscribing. Welcome to my Friday Sews vlog where I talk to you about what I've been up to in the world of sewing this week and what my plans are for the week ahead. The hashtag Friday Sews was brought to you by Jen in Jen's sewing room and she created this hashtag so there was a simple way for you guys to be able to get access to sewing content. So a lot of vloggers out there post under the hashtag Friday Sews and if you search that hashtag you will be, you'll be presented with a wonderful array of different vloggers um, bringing you similar content around what they've been up to in the world of sewing. So before I start, I'm going to tell you what I've been wearing, what I'm wearing. So I am wearing my Tasuti Patterns um, turtleneck, which is called the Monroe Turtleneck. And this is a free pattern, and I've made this in a wonderful, beautiful rib knit. I've actually got this in red as well, and this is in, I don't know if it's a black or a navy, I think it's black, um, striped rib knit, and it's just, ugh, it's just so cosy and lovely. This is a free pattern, can you believe? And I definitely put, I put this on this morning. It was a bit colder outside and I feel really snuggly in it. And um, despite myself putting on a little bit of weight, it still fits really nice. The arms are a little bit tight, but they do come up a bit tight on this pattern. Um, and I definitely want to make a couple more. I think this is a really quick sew, something that, you know, you've only got four pieces, like five pieces, the neck, the front, the back and the shoulder and the arms and it's a nice easy sleeve because it's a drop sleeve um, and if I do it in a plain fabric <laughs> I won't have to worry about the pattern matching. Um, so yeah, to Suti Patterns, if you're interested in having a nice turtleneck, um, get on to Suti Patterns and download this pattern. I made the size one I think. Um, one of the things that you do read about this pattern a lot is that arms come up quite tight so if you ha do have a, a larger bicep you might just want to size up on it or give yourself a bit of extra seam allowance on there. So what have I been up to this week? Wow. This week really is the dressmakers ball edition of um, Friday Sews. Now I did um and about whether I should share this with you um, or whether I should wait till after the dressmakers ball to share like a big reveal of my dress but I thought that's really annoying if I was a viewer I'd find that really annoying so I haven't got any pictures of me in my dressmakers ball dress but I will be sharing with you where I've got to with it so um, to bring you along on that journey so yeah the main focus this week has been getting my dress made up for the dressmakers ball now the dressmakers ball is a ball that's been run by the crafty so and so which are an online fabric store, although they are stopping selling fabric um, and focusing on their workshops and um, schooling side of the business. Now, I have attended a couple of workshops at the Crafty Sew and Sew and they are amazing and they have a jeans weekend uh, in January and I'm really keen to book onto that. Just need to save my pennies for it. Um, so it's run by Freya and Sarah and um, it's going to be held at the City Rooms in Leicester, which is a lovely um, building that is just going to be amazing atmosphere for the ball. Now, you unfortunately can't buy any more tickets to the ball now because it actually is closed. Um, but I'm sure that they're, I'm sure they will be ha holding one next year. Um, so the ball, dressmaker's ball dress that I decided on after a lot of deliberation was this one, and it is the Easy Vogue nine three seven three, and. I went on a bit of a journey with selecting this, um, you know, there was lots of different options that I went for. I did have my heart set on another dress, um, which I can show you. However, with time scales being as they are and me being, I still class myself as a beginner. I've only been sewing for just, a, just over a year now um, and only been garment sewing since October last year. So... This was the dress that I wanted to make, which is bow. I think it's boned. It's um, a beautiful dress, um, and definitely next year I will be making this. But I will be starting probably in February because <laughs> it takes so long to do. But yeah, this is the one that I really wanted to make, but I just wasn't confident enough in my skills and the time that I had available to um, get it made up by. So. I also had a bit of a journey with the fabric that I purchased for this. Those of you will know I bought some gorgeous, quite expensive satin, silk satin and silk burnout fabric. But because it was so narrow, I couldn't get the, pa couldn't get the pattern pieces 
on the fabric. So that meant I had to go with my backup fabric. I'm so glad I did go with the backup fabric because I'm now going to use that really special fabric for a dress for my birthday, which is coming up in November. So I'm really excited about that. Any suggestions for a nice dress to go out for a meal in, let me know um, in the comments below. And um, just so you know, that fabric is this fabric. In the end, um, funnily enough, I went with a fabric that I actually purchased from Crafty So and So, and it was this satin crepe, satin, uh, crepe back satin, and it has a little bit of stretch in it. I've never sewn with um, crepe back satin before, and oh my god, it was a dream! Absolutely love sewing with it. It had that little bit of stretch in it, which meant that helped with the fitting process, and it's in this lovely purple colour. And this was five pound a meter in their sale. Um, and I think they did have some other colours as well. And I really, really would like to sew with this again. So the one side is satin and then the other side is like a duller fabric. And I have seen dresses done um, in different panels where you have this at the f this on one panel and the, that on the other panel. So you get quite a nice like um, contrasting effect. But yeah, this fabric was absolutely amazing to sew with. Look how stretchy that is. Um, and I really enjoyed it. Um, I did a twirl, as you know, um, which you, I made out of bed sheets. I'll insert a picture of it. And um, yeah, so I, I, I was I was fairly confident I got the fit right. Um, obviously, you never really know because a bed sheet is a lot different to lining and stretch fab, stretchier fabric. Um, some of the key points that I did when I was sewing this, I did buy some Microtex needles and I used a 70 Microtex because although the fabric's not that thin, I didn't want to have any pulls in it so and that worked really well and I also had some silk pins that I purchased that were really sharp to make sure that I wasn't leaving pin prints in the fabric and that worked really well this fabric is really really robust so I'm really really happy with that I haven't got any pulls um, at all so very very happy with that um, and I made the size 12 this pattern actually only goes up to a 12 um, and I made the size 12 um, which measurements are a 34 bust, 26 waist and a 36 hip. Now I have in no way, shape or form got a 26 inch waist. I never will have and um, even when I'm at my slimmest I don't and at the moment I'm about 31. But I did check as with these patterns, the um, with these McCall's and um, Vogue patterns, I did check the um, measurements on the pattern pieces and I can't quite remember off the top of my head um, but the waist measurements um, were nearly, I think they were probably about 29.30 for the waist. So I thought, because there's a one and a half seam allowance, I'd be all right. And they tend to come up big anyway. And I always find with these patterns that even though my bust is like a 36, 37, um, the bust was well within those measurements. I think it was um, 39 or something. And I always have to pull in at the back by a I have to pull in the fabric at the back into a V at the top because I do have a narrow back at the top of my back. Um, and yeah, and then the hips. There was enough room in the hips as well um, on, the, on the finished measurements. So I always recommend go with the finished measurements on these patterns, not the measurements. I probably, if I'd got the size 14, would have made the five size 14 um, and took it in, but I didn't have that luxury. So I knew when I made up the twirl that I actually had to let out the seam allowances here. So this is my widest, this bit here is my problem area I would say, or the one that's out of proportion. So although I'll very often be one size in the bust and hips, I'm not in proportion because I don't really have that kind of hourglass figure where it goes in. I'm quite wide across my, well there's not much difference between the width of my bust and my hips and my waist basically um so i did have to let it out a little bit um on the twirl um i think i had to go to a half a centimeter seam allowance or three quarters of a centimeter seam allowance at the hips but then back in at the top and back in at the bottom um so yeah uh i was fairly confident though that because this has got stretch as well i'd be okay so it was a fairly simple sew to be honest with you obviously took my time and it's pretty much finished so it's i'm filming this on thursday and i'll upload this tonight ready for tomorrow 
or for you Friday um, so I still have one job left to do two jobs left to do I have to sew on the hook and eyes at the back of the neck but that's a two minute job and then I have got some applique that I have purchased but however this applique doesn't have iron on and um, so at the moment I'm having I'm faced with the task of having to sew it on which hand sew it on which I don't really want to do so I have ordered which is coming on Friday some double sided iron on I don't know what it's called iron on thing that you basically put on the back of the applique it's double sided iron it onto that and then iron it onto your fabric and I shouldn't have to stitch it on but if that doesn't come I will be doing a lot of stitching on Friday night to get this finished so without further ado I will show you my dress okay so I'm holding this in my hand because I want you to get the full effect of it so this is my ball gown now I've gone with the applique in the end because I wanted to bling it up a bit but I didn't want to use like rhinestones and things because that's not really me um because without it I was a little bit worried that I was going to look like a dairy milk bar <laughs> so for those of you in the UK you'll know what I mean this is a Cadbury's chocolate colour um in this in this like burgundy in this um purple color and i just thought all i need is a big white bow and i'd actually look like um, a dairy milk and for those of you that aren't familiar with what dairy milk is i'll put a picture of a dairy milk <laughs> chocolate um so yeah i've gone with this applique um which i absolutely love i ordered them they were six pounds each from amazon and they were so good quality when they came so i'll just i'm gonna just put this down so i can show you a little bit more detail so i'll turn this round so at the moment I've got it positioned here. Obviously I want to be careful that I don't have a flower on my butt or a flower on my boob. And I just think that's a lovely position to have that in. Um, and then I've also put some on the skirt as well. Obviously it's not attached yet. Um, and I just love this fishtail effect. It kind of goes, um, I don't actually know if it's fishtail, it's more of a um, fit and flare. So yeah, it goes in, fits over the hips and then flares out. It's got this lovely pleat detail here. Sorry about the wobbly camera. So lovely pleat deal here. My top stitching leaves a little to be desired here, but no one's going to be. If, if people are that close, they're too close, aren't they? So they need to back off. <laughs> um, I'm so happy with the top stitching around here. I've got my lining in there. And um, oh, let me just show you this swish as well at the bottom when you dance. Hopefully that will pick it up. It's lovely and swishy. And um, yeah, this is my ball gown and I'm very, very proud of myself. So obviously I haven't got any pictures of me in it, um, but that will be rectified on Saturday. I'll obviously share on my Instagram and I'll obviously share um, on next week's Friday sews and let you know how the ball went. But I was really keen to involve you in the process and let you see before the event um, what my dress looks like. Now I also have made myself a little clutch bag as well. Now. This is a pattern, uh, this is a tutorial on YouTube by Debbie Shaw and I was introduced to this pattern by Claire from Stitch Hem Sew and it's a lovely um, simple pattern, she made it up for a wedding and I've made a matching clutch bag here and I've put the applique, again haven't sewed it on yet, I'm hoping this bonding fabric comes before I have to revert to hand sewing and I've used some Lady McElroy fabric that I had left over from my jumpsuit that I made and this was from come from a Sew Hayley Jane box so that's the lining there beautiful and it's got a little clasp like that and then I had this velvet ribbon that can be used on my wrist and that literally took about an hour to make you just need um Two, you need three squares of fabric, one for the lining, two for the outer, some wadding, which I had some fleece back um, kind of interfacing, and then you need these little clasps, which I actually had in my stash, which was great. And yeah, the tutorial is so helpful. Um, there's no exposed seams inside there. It's actually um, all like, um, no exposed seam at all. It's all lovely and neat. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to um, having the whole matching outfit so yeah let's just uh you can see there's my bag very floral so yeah that is my i'm very proud of myself um, and making that accessory so yeah only thing i've got left to do is either the cheat way and iron on these appliques or i will have to revert to hand sewing which i don't really 
I don't really like doing because I'm not very good at it. I've not had a lot of chance to practice it. Um, so yeah, but ultimately that's what I might have to revert to, some hand sewing. So that is my ball gown. Okay, what else have I been doing this week? Well, not much really. The only other thing that I've been concentrating on is my So Purple to End ALZ uh, collaboration that I was doing with um, Michelle from the um, from Michelle Sews Again on YouTube and the Real Michelle Sews Again on Instagram. And I will put a link in my card where I talk about everything that I did in respect of my ice dyeing collaboration um, to raise awareness for Alzheimer's. And on that blog, I also share some personal information about you know my own personal journey with Alzheimer's and, and my mum, bless her, who got diagnosed those about five or six years ago um, but I have the fab I have my loungewear set here that I ice dyed and now it is dirty because I've been wearing it since I made it um, but um, I've just had to grab it out of the wash basket to show you but this is what I ended up with it was a ready to wear um, loungewear set that I got from Primark and um, it was like a grey mal, um, melange kind of effect and I made the trousers and the bottoms and I just got this beautiful watercolour um, pattern that I'm just so over the moon with and I've got the bug now I really want to um do some dyeing with some um darker colours some more mustard ochres khakis etc so I'm excited to perhaps get some of those dyes in my stash and have a little experiment with those but yeah really great way to um make something a little bit more interesting so yeah, find out more about how I did that. I taught you through the whole process of ice dyeing, which was I was new to, and um, that can be all found in my vlog around that, which I'll link to. And you can also check out Michelle's vlog as well, where she did um, dyed exactly the same loungewear set, but she used one colour, and it's amazing. The great thing about ice dyeing is that the difference between ice dyeing and tie dyeing is that you are using the actual powder. Um, instead of a liquid dye and because the powder is made up of different component colours so i.e. Um, a green is made up of different blues and yellows when you sprinkle that on the ice it sometimes splits out into those colours so you could just use one colour of green but then your effect is blues and yellows and greens so it's amazing really and I'm really her, her make is absolutely amazing as well so have a look at her channel and check it out Okay, so that's really all the sewing I've been doing. I did receive my Little Miss Sew and Sew um, subscription box, which I have filmed the unboxing for, and I have also cut out the fabric, ready for that, um, and need to get that sewn up as soon as I'm back from the um, dressmaker's ball. That will be my priority, because I love to get that vlog up. And that vlog is where I show you my fabric selection, my pattern selection, my unboxing, and also the, the final make as well and pattern review. Okay, um, and then the other thing is that I have had a reprieve from the lovely Claire and Crystal in respect to my collaboration around the Heather Blazer. We have given ourselves till the following week. I was actually going to recommend actually that if we could get it made up for Friday the 7th, we are actually all going to the Knitting and Stitching show and wouldn't it be cool to all be in our Heather Blazers, but I haven't floated that out there yet, so I'll send them a message today and see uh, <laughs> if they uh, want to do that. Nothing like a deadline to make you focus on the things you've got to do. So, yeah, what else? Um, so what am I going to be doing next week? So obviously on Saturday I've got the dressmaker's ball. I'm going over to Leicester. I'm going to try and do a little bit of fabric perusing in some of the Leicester fabric shops. Um, and I'm meeting the lovely Anna from You Got Me In Stitches, who is just the most beautiful soul in the whole of this world. And I can't wait to catch up with her again. Um, and we um, are sharing a room, um, sharing a hotel room and going to the ball together. She's my date. So that's really, really good. And um, I've also been in contact with Michelle and the sewing bunny and she's staying over in a hotel quite close to us um, and we're probably going to meet up for pre-ball drinky poos before uh, the big the big ball itself so really looking forward to meeting Michelle in person um, also really looking forward to meeting Karen from so little time and everybody else that's going to be going as well because I'm sure there's lots of people that I will recognize once I'm there and people that I don't recognize as well um, so if you're going please come up and say hello to me introduce yourself um, you know I'm a friendly face and I'm always up for a chat about sewing or anything else for that matter so yesterday okay. I was asked by my dad if I wouldn't mind taking my mum to the opticians because she needed to pick up some glasses and obviously 
she can't communicate so um, she needs to kind of have somebody with her to communicate for her um so um my dad couldn't go because he had another appointment so i took her and when i was in litchfield which is where my mum and dad live um i popped into um a new sewing shop that i'm aware of i have been there before and it's called the fabric vault and it's such a nice little shop the last time i went there they didn't have so much dressmaking fabric it was a lot more cottons and crafting um fabrics but they do have some dressmaking and um i decided to go back in there to get a thread so i went in for a thread and came out with a thread and lots of other things as well so i thought i'd just quickly share them with you and um, they have had a lot more fabrics um come in um and they have got a great selection of halloween fabrics and christmas fabrics and i got really excited and had to rein myself in and i will be going back um because i've got some more stock coming in next week as well which sounds really cool so um i will put a link in the notes below to the store i don't think they do online yet but they do have a facebook group and if you're local to the area which i know some guys are then um you know please pop in and support the business they are starting up some workshops as well they're very basic workshops at the moment in respect of like learning to sew but they are planning to branch out into quilt making etc and that's something that i really would like to get into i'd love to go to a workshop on making a quilt because it's something that you know i just want to add to my bow of sewing skills really and um, so what did i pick up let me show you so the first fabric that I picked up is a quite an exciting fabric. It's actually glow in the dark, which just <laughs> they had this range of glow in the dark crafting cotton. And um, I just thought, right, I'm going to get this for Halloween and make myself a shirt. So I've got this skeleton fabric and I've got a meter and a half of it. And I'm going to make a little top for it. And it glows in the dark. They show me a picture of it all glowing up in the dark. And it was absolutely amazing. So, um, yeah, this I've washed it already and I want to get it made up into something quite quick i'm thinking maybe either the scout tee which is i'm um, like a woven t-shirt which i haven't got the pattern for but i'm considering getting it or the is it the marlow from seamworks which i have made before um which is quite a nice boxy fit shirt with a hem facing which i really like so i'm keen to make that up again um and that might look nice in that so and i think i've got enough of that because it only takes a meter and a half of fabric so yeah that is really cool and they've got lots of other fabrics that glow in the dark and i think they've got some more coming in next week which have foil in them as well which seemed quite nice and they said that they were going to be quite reasonable because they got a really good deal on it so yeah that was my skeleton um cotton um and then the other thing that i found was um a really really keen now probably don't know but i absolutely love christmas it is my favorite time of year i love pantomimes i love the whole build up i i'm just a big fan and, and hopefully when i get into vlogging this you'll see how much of a fan i am when it comes to christmas so i wanted to get ahead early this year and i um, when I was in the shop they showed me these wonderful advent calendars that you can make and it's basically these panels and I chose this one and it's the skater advent and it's just got all these lovely little um, images of people skating on ice in a Christmas scene and you basically cut out these little pockets pop them on probably put some wadding on the back and then you've got your own little um advent calendar that you can put your chocolates or i don't know little um christmas jokes or something like that in so i really want to get that made up asap and then my mom was with me so she was like she wanted one so she chose a panel for me to make up for her and this is the one that she chose which is very traditional so it's a nice big christmas tree with the little uh um what are they called little pockets that you on now this is this was one of the more complex ones but there's some really easy ones and there's different types of panels that depend on your sewing level um some of them you don't even have to cut out the um don't even have to like make pockets um just really interesting different ways to do it so so that's that i want to get those done quite quickly because i want them ready for december and it really got me in the mood of thinking about Christmas. So I'll probably share with you in another vlog, but I've started to write down the gifts that I want to make this year for people. Um, because I know there's a challenge being run and I can't remember who it's being run by. It might be Alison from So Like Dotty and Adam are doing a Christmas gift challenge. I'll put the details if I can find it in. So I will be doing a vlog about that and all the gifts that I'm going to be making. And then 
The last thing that I got, I just, I saw this fabric and I had to have it. I've not seen it anywhere else and it's this chiffon fabric. And I've got, I wanna make a pussy bow blouse with it for Christmas. And it's this gorgeous bird of like paradise fabric. I've got two meters of it. It's 12 pounds a meter and I love it. It's got some beautiful tones in it. Very autumnal and yeah, I think that'll look really nice. I might even go for the patina. I have got visions of a, of a pussy bow blouse, you know, with a high collar. Um, but yeah, any recommendations on a really nice pussy bow um, blouse? So just let me know. Look at the drape on it. So nice. It's actually, it's, it is not opaque. It is see-through, but not, it has got a white background on it. So it's probably not too revealing. But yeah, that was my other purchase. And then the only other things that I got was some little buttons, which I love a button. Um, so there was this one button that was just random on its own, which was gold, which I just really liked. So I got that. I'm thinking that might go on my Heather blazer, but I don't know. So that's why I got that one. Then I got these gorgeous ones, which I do have a plan for. I have some lovely Lady McElroy knitted fabric that I want to make the Marlowe in. And these would match perfectly. So I got some of those. And then I also got these ones here, which I just love the colours like brownie marble effect and then finally this button which as you can see is like a um, shell effect but then it's reversible when you turn it over it was like that on the back so I thought they were really cool so I've got a few of those as well and there are my little buttons that I got oh and then I also got some little patches that they had for a pound and it was a little horsey that I thought Alice would really like and then finally an ice lolly so I'll probably put that away for the summer but yeah Alice loves ice lollies so I thought that was really cute and that's what I got so yeah a bit of an unexpected fabric haul that I didn't think I was going to do so yeah so that is my week so what else what am I going to be doing next week so next week as I say dressmakers ball on Saturday probably be chilling out on Sunday because I'll be tired um, and then for the rest of the week, the focus is sewing up my re um, showing up my heather blazer, and also getting cracked on with my little Miss So and So subscription box. Um, and then on Friday next week, I will be at the knitting and stitching show with the lovely Claire from Stitch Hem Sew, and also Crystal from my social thread. And I just cannot wait. If you're going on Friday, let me know, um, and it'd be great if you see me there. Please come and say hello. Um, maybe in my heather blazer we don't know and obviously you'll be able to see me stand out from the crowd because it's not a plain blazer um but yeah so really exciting stuff to be doing over the next uh, next week and um, that's all for me for now i hope you've enjoyed this vlog if you've liked this video please click the like button and if you don't subscribe please click that subscribe button as well and um, if you want to support my channel further you can buy me a coffee on my Kofi account but as I always say you're the most important thing um, is just you watching it watching me and subscribing so please continue to do so um, and I'll see you all soon happy sewing bye <laughs>